The Cost of Love, A Kikuyu and Kalenjin Forbidden Tale. In the lush highlands of Kenya, the Kikuyu and Kalenjin tribes lived side by side, each respecting the boundaries that had existed for generations. The Kikuyu were known for their farming skills, tending to their crops in the rich, fertile soil. The Kalenjin, renowned for their prowess as herders and runners, roamed the grassy plains with their cattle. One day, Wanjiku, a beautiful young Kikuyu woman with dark braided hair and adorned in a vibrant shuka, ventured beyond her village to gather wild berries. As she wandered further than usual, she stumbled upon Kiptu, a tall, athletic Kalenjin warrior dressed in traditional beads and a flowing robe. He was resting under an acacia tree, his spear by his side, watching over his cattle. Their eyes met, and an unspoken connection sparked between them. Despite the unspoken rule that Kikuyu and Kalenjin should not mix, their curiosity overcame them. They began to talk, sharing stories of their lives and cultures. Kiptu was captivated by Wanjiku's laughter and her tales of farming, while Wanjiku found herself drawn to Kiptu's strength and the rhythmic way he spoke of his cattle and running. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow over the land. Reluctantly, they parted ways, but the seeds of a forbidden love had been sown. Over the following weeks, Wanjiku and Kiptu found reasons to meet secretly at the same spot under the acacia tree. They shared more stories, their laughter echoing through the highlands. Wanjiku brought Kiptu fruits from her farm, while Kiptu shared tales of his cattle and the long-distance races he participated in. Their bond deepened, and soon they couldn't imagine their lives without each other. However, the looming threat of discovery weighed heavily on them. Both knew the consequences of their forbidden love. Their families and tribes held deeply rooted traditions and prejudices that would never allow a union between a Kikuyu and a Kalenjin. One day, as the rains poured down, Wanjiku and Kiptu took shelter under the acacia tree. In the closeness of the moment, Kiptu took Wanjiku's hand and confessed his love for her. His heart raced as he awaited her response. Wanjiku, tears mixing with the rain, admitted she felt the same. They vowed to find a way to be together despite the odds. Wanjiku and Kiptu's secret meetings continued, but whispers and suspicions began to grow in their villages. One evening, Wanjiku's younger brother Kamau noticed her sneaking out. Curious and protective, he decided to follow her. Kamau's heart sank when he saw his sister with Kiptu. He knew the trouble this would bring. He rushed back to the village and confronted Wanjiku upon her return. She pleaded with him to keep her secret explaining the depth of her feelings for Kiptu. Kamau, torn between loyalty to his family and his love for his sister, reluctantly agreed, but warned her of the potential consequences. Meanwhile, Kiptu's father, a respected elder, had also grown suspicious of his son's frequent absences. He instructed Kiptu's younger brother, Chibet, to find out where Kiptu was going. Chibet, eager to prove himself, followed Kiptu and witnessed the secret meetings. The next day, Chibet confronted Kiptu. Kiptu, knowing he couldn't lie to his brother, confessed his love for Wanjiku. Chibet, shocked and fearful of the repercussions, urged Kiptu to end the relationship. Kiptu, however, was determined to find a way to be with Wanjiku, despite the risks. Despite their efforts to keep their love hidden, the inevitable happened. One fateful evening, Kamau's suspicions were confirmed when he overheard village elders discussing strange sightings near the boundary. Word spread quickly, and soon the elders of both tribes were alerted. A council meeting was called, and both Wanjiku and Kiptu were summoned. The atmosphere was tense as elders from the Kikuyu and Kalenjin tribes gathered. Wanjiku and Kiptu stood before them, their hearts pounding. The elders demanded an explanation, their faces stern and unyielding. Wanjiku, with tears streaming down her face, bravely confessed her love for Kiptu. Kiptu stepped forward, declaring his intention to honor and protect Wanjiku, pleading with the elders to understand their love. The elders, however, were not moved. Tradition and tribal laws were not to be broken. They decreed that Wanjiku and Kiptu must be separated and never see each other again. Both tribes were to be reminded of the importance of maintaining their boundaries and traditions. Wanjiku's family took her away, her cries echoing through the night. Kiptu was led back to his village, his heart heavy with grief.
Despite their vows, the lovers were torn apart, and the future seemed bleak. Days turned into weeks, and the separation weighed heavily on both Wanjiku and Kiptu. They yearned for each other, their hearts aching with the pain of forbidden love. The highlands, once filled with their laughter, now felt desolate. Wanjiku's health began to deteriorate, her spirit broken by the forced separation. Seeing her daughter's condition, Wanjiku's mother, who had always been more understanding, decided to take matters into her own hands. She secretly arranged for Wanjiku to meet Kiptu one last time. Under the cover of night, Wanjiku's mother led her to the acacia tree where Kiptu was waiting. The reunion was bittersweet. They embraced, tears of joy and sorrow mingling. Kiptu, seeing Wanjiku's weakened state, knew they couldn't continue like this. In a final act of love and sacrifice, Kiptu decided to leave the highlands and take Wanjiku with him. They would find a place where they could be together without fear of retribution. With heavy hearts, they bid farewell to their families and homeland, setting off on a journey to an unknown future. Their story spread across the tribes, a testament to the power of love and the cost of defying tradition. The highlands mourned their loss, but over time, their tale softened the hearts of many, leading to a gradual change in attitudes towards intertribal relationships. <laughs>